Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is, um, oh actually we'll get to that in just a second. So this talk, uh, <laughs> you should be, you've been here for like 10 minutes, so I guess you're at the right place. Uh, this is the talk, or an introduction to Inspector Gadget, a containerized uh, framework for eBPF systems programming. My name is Chris Cool. I'm a principal technical project manager at Microsoft, and yeah, I'm Mauricio. I uh, principal engineer and the technical leader behind the Inspector Gadget project. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, in this talk, I'm doing most of the uh, talking, but. Um, uh, Mauricio has a, a talk at actually KubeCon, and so if you want to hear more of Mauricio, then you can uh, uh, go to that talk. But we'll get to that later. Um, so this talk is basically going to have a brief overview uh, and a little bit of history for Inspector Gadget, because this is called the reintroduction. And reintroduction is what we're saying, because um, what we're presenting here is, is kind of a, a new vision that we've been implementing in Inspector Gadget. Uh, but Inspector Gadget has been around for a little while. so. Um, Inspector Gadget um, can be uh, used as a tool, so this means interactively. Um, uh, you know, when you're trying to debug something, you can you know, work with it directly, or you can use it as a framework to build something on top of, or to integrate into your system. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about looking ahead. And a little bit of a disclaimer, all this stuff is under active uh, development. Uh, many of the things are behind an experimental flag currently. Um, Many of the features we're going to be presenting uh, just landed two days ago uh, in a release. Um, others are still in development. Uh, and where they are in branches uh, that are still under development, when we demo something, we will actually put links to those branches or tags, or, or um, not tags, but uh, issues. Um, and then we will, you know, this should stabilize in the next uh, releases. And we do basically a release every month. So that means in the next few months. Um, and, you know, we're really eager to have your feedback on this and your, you know, uh, your feedback on the functionality and the UX experience. So let's get into it. Um, so what is Inspector Gadget? It is a set of tools uh, to inspect Linux and Kubernetes systems using eBPF programs. So this is uh, pretty much the first time we've mentioned eBPF. Does people, do people have an understanding what eBPF is? Who, can we raise your hands if you know what eBPF is? Okay, that's most people, but not every, everyone. Um, we'll get a little bit into that in a second. Um, and it's also a framework. So you can um, use Inspector Gadget to build, package, and deploy um, what we call gadgets. Gadgets are basically um, eBPF programs, some metadata, and possibly optional user, user pro um, space processing uh, programs. Um, and uh, you can build this as a framework to also build things on top of. So I did want to, because this is, uh, you know, I don't want to assume that everybody understands eBPF programs, even though most of the people raise their hands. Uh, but eBPF programs here, you know, in a, in a Linux system, we have kernel space and we have user space. Um, eBPF programs are a way for people to tap into, um, into the Linux kernel to get extra information. Previously, to get this information, you needed to build a, um, a kernel module. Um, and a kernel module is not necessarily safe. For example, you can easily crash the kernel. Um, eBPF programs are uh, safe, uh, they are dynamically loadable, and you can get a lot of information that previously was either difficult or not, you weren't able to get. And also very interesting, because it lives inside the kernel, um, this stuff is very performant. So you, you don't have to do um, uh, context switches between user space and, and, uh, and kernel space uh, to get this information. So. And so this big question mark over here is, you know, when you get the data in out of the kernel, and basically these eBPF programs, um, when an event happens, they put that information inside an eBPF map, and then it has to be pulled out, and you have to do things with it in user space. And so Inspector Gadget handles, you know, loading the eBPF programs, but it does a lot of stuff in user space uh, that you would normally have to build yourself. And so a little bit of background. Um, e uh, Inspector Gadget started in 2019. Uh, very early in 2019, um, we wanted to bring eBPF and um, BCC tools. So BCC is a, is a um, collection of eBPF programs uh, developed by some engineers at uh, Netflix. Um, and it basically allows you to, to, to inspect Linux systems. However, those were individual systems and not um, a Kubernetes um, a Kubernetes cluster. And so Inspector Gadget was originally designed only for uh, Kubernetes, and you could really only use it in the context of Kubernetes. Uh, this has been changing, and so it now supports running um, on Linux host directly, and so you can use it simply on the CLI on a individual node. Um, but you can, of course, also still use it uh, 
in the context of Kubernetes. Um, and it's one of the main uh, use cases. Um, but what we did, because we were building a lot of things around BPF, what we found is that we were essentially built a framework. And so the work that we have been doing and what we are talking about in this reintroduction uh, is we have been transitioning from a collection of individual gadgets that were built in to um, Inspector Gadget uh, to a system where you can basically package BPF programs and uh, similar to container images, you can share these uh, gadgets, as we call them, um, with other folks in, as OCI images. Um, and then you basically um, can write your own uh, gadgets and then you can, and then um, Inspector Gadget can um, operate on those, run them, uh, and do uh, the, the other stuff that we'll present in just a second. So, is this, yeah, okay. So why did we start the project? Um, what we were talking about before is there's a lot of stuff you have to do in user space. And there's no reason for everybody to implement that themselves. Um, and so things that you would normally do when the information comes out of uh, a BPF program and is put into a BPF map um, is that you want to enrich that data. And when we say enrichment, uh, what this means is that an eBPF program runs inside of the kernel. It does not have any concept of Kubernetes. Uh, it doesn't have a concept of you know, uh, the, con the container it's running in. But it does know about the, the, the kernel primitives, so like the mount namespace, uh, the PID, uh, and these, these kind of things. Uh, but you want to get the information as you understand your system. You want to understand it as these high-level concepts of Kubernetes pod, which container it's in, or even system D unit. Um, and so, and so you also want to be able to filter this information uh, based on those higher level concepts. So you want to say, only show me the information uh, that, is, that is relevant to, for example, this, this pod, this uh, Kubernetes namespace, or this specific container. Um, and other things you do, you might want to do something with that data. You want to send it to, so for example, Prometheus, or a log server, or expose it via an API. Um, and Often, when the data comes out of uh, the kernel, you want to do some kind of post-processing. And so all of these things are covered by uh, Inspector Gadget, and we try to make a framework that you can simply tap into and use. Uh, and some of this stuff will be done automatically for you uh, by using Inspector Gadget and packaging your BPF programs or consuming gadgets um, yeah, with uh, Inspector Gadget. So, um, so and one of the things we also wanted to do, we wanted to make sharing BPF programs very easy. And to do this, this is why we used um, OCI containers or images. Um, and we also want to make it um, so you can use this in a lot of different ways. So we, we um, support uh, running it inside of a Kubernetes cluster. We support uh, running this directly as a tool using the IG uh, CLI tool. Uh, you can also run this in a, you can run IG as a in daemon mode and interact with it with a with a um, client, um, and so this allows you, for example, to run in, um, IG inside of a Linux node, uh, but be able to use uh, interact with it from, for example, a um, your Mac or your Windows host, which has no concept of BPF really. Um, yeah, and so where we showed you before uh, the BPF overview, um, all of these things on the user space. This is what Inspector Gadget tries to take care of. So, uh, this is basically the tools that you will interact with uh, with Inspector Gadget. We have IG, which is a CL, CL, um, CLI tool that you can use on Linux. Um, this is kind of the kitchen sink of uh, Inspector Gadget. Uh, you can use it interactively to get, collect information, uh, but you can also use it for the building, pushing, and pulling of gadget images. Um, kubectl gadget is what is the client that you use whenever you, you deploy Inspector Gadget inside of Kubernetes cluster. Um, and very similarly, um, you can use gadget CTL, uh, which is a client. Um, we will probably merge these two eventually. Um, a gadget CTL is a client that you can use with IG when it's in daemon mode. And so this bears the question of what actually is a gadget. Uh, we mentioned that it's an eBPF program, uh, but it also um, includes uh, optional user space modules, uh, and we'll talk about that in a second, and we'll actually have a demo of that. Uh, we are basically using WASM um, for the user space processing, um, so you can do that in user, um, process the data in user space. Um, and then we have metadata, and this metadata should basically 
um, give hints to Inspector Gadget of how this information can be used. Uh, it should get basic information like the author, um, but it also should be, um, you know, tell you what kind of formats it supports. Uh, does it support uh, exporting to Prometheus or logging, et cetera? Um, and what we're actually interested in, in also exploring is basically automatic visualizations. Whenever you create a gadget, uh, that data can be automatically visualized um, in various tools. Uh, but really, the gadget is a deployable unit, similar to how a container image is. Uh, and it's a shareable unit. You can just send somebody a link and then they can use that. So uh, this is a more visual way of looking at it. Uh, so you have your OCI registry, you push that OCI, you push that uh, um, gadget uh, to the OCI registry. That includes the metadata, the eBPF program, um, and the user space module. Okay, and now I'm going to hand it off for demos for Mauricio. Yeah, thank you, Chris. So I want to show you how to build a gadget, how to run a gadget, and how to push and pull a gadget image. So here we have, actually it's here. So this is one of the gadgets that we provide. It's Trace Open. This is based on BCC. And yeah, this gadget provides information of the files that are being opened in the file system. So it could be useful for you to understand if a given process or container is trying to access a file that is dangerous, like it is a shadow, it is a password, or something like that. So yeah, this gadget is composed by two different things, as Chris was mentioning before. So we have the BPF program. This is mostly based on BCC. I'm not going into the details there. And we have this metadata file. So this metadata file provides additional information about the program. So in this case, we have like basic information of what is the name of the gadget, what is the description of the gadget. So that's like some documentation for, for the gadget. And we have information that says, okay, this gadget provides a tracer. A tracer in Inspector Gadget is a gadget that provides is events as they happen in the kernel. And then we also have information about the structure of the events that the gadget is providing. So we have different columns or different fields of a structure, and we are able to tell Inspector Gadget how to format, how to print that information to the screen. So for instance, we can say, okay, this is the width of this specific column, or there are some columns that maybe the user is not interested in by default, so we can hide them. Okay, so let me show you how we can compile that. So the first thing that we have to do is to enable the experimental mode. We are still developing that, so that's not so stable yet. And yeah, so let me go to the folder there, and then I can run the image build command. So this is like similar to the Docker syntax. So we are building the uh, container, the gadget, and putting that into an OCI image. OK, so we already have our image, and we should be able to run that. So if I do this, it should be this one. Okay, so we, we, here we have our gadget that is running. It's providing information about the different events that are happening on the cluster. In this case, there are a lot of events because I'm running also Minikube on this machine, so Minikube is doing a lot of activity there. Mm, but yeah, this is interesting, but so far I only have the image on my local machine. So what about if I want to share that gadget with other people, with customers, and so on? So what we can do there is to tag the image. So I'm telling what is the remote uh, URL of the container registry where I want to push that, and then I can push that to the container registry. Okay, so right now my uh, gadget image is available for everybody that wants to run that. So yeah, let me show you also how we can run that on Kubernetes. It should be this one. So yeah. So what is going to happen in this case is that Kubernetes is going to contact that OCI registry is going to pull the image for the gadget and it's going to run that on the different nodes. So if I execute into a, into a pod of my um, cluster, we can see the different events that are generated there. Okay, that's it. Yes, yeah, so really, thanks Mauricio. Um, really interesting there is to note that, you know, all that additional information you got about the pods, about the container names, that's all in, um, that's not what um, um, 
EPPF provides. That's what Inspector Gadget is enriching uh, the data uh, with. And you know, we demonstrated that running on a Linux host and on Kubernetes. And so what I mentioned earlier is that we, uh, we support running this in many different ways. For example, um, you know, it's very easy to understand you know, if you run IG directly, it's simply a process, and then it loads the eBPF programs in the kernel, and then it interacts just right there on the host your, your own. Uh, you can also package IG inside of a container, and you can deploy it like you would any container, uh, given the proper permissions and flags down here. Um, but like I said before, you can run IG interactively, but you can also run it in daemon mode. And in daemon mode, for example, if you deploy this as a systemd unit or a service, uh, then you know, it's running here in the background or you know, as a service, and you can interact with it using Gadget CTL. Um, and obviously, Gadget CTL can be running on a Windows or a, a Mac OS uh, node. It doesn't have to be Linux in that case. And uh, similarly, Q, uh, kubectl gadget doesn't matter which OS it's on. Uh, but when you when you do kubectl gadget deploy ig, um, then <coughs> that will deploy um, Inspector Gadget as a, a daemon set, and then it will give you the information um, you know in the context of um, all of your nodes inside of Kubernetes. Um, and additionally, very recently, um, uh, Kubernetes added a, a debug node um, command, and what this different than the previous one where you have everything on all the nodes. Uh, this allows you to basically debug an individual node, and we added support recently for Inspector Gadget to use that, so you know you can use it um, using this built-in command in, in kubectl. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different ways to, to use it, um, but really, you know, we've talked about this a few, a few times. But enrichment is really one of the most powerful things uh, because um, when you generally, um, you know, this eBPF program is not giving you the information uh, you want as you, as you understand your system, and you have to do a bunch of stuff for that. Uh, and so we want to make sure that uh, all the data that, you, uh, that is output from Inspector Gadget is basically relevant to your situation. Um, and so, um, yeah, and, and, and very important, though, is not only can you display that, uh, but you can also filter it uh, based on those high-level concepts. And so Inspector Gadget basically... Uh, if you say, um, you know, um, give me only only the uh, things that are that are interesting uh, for this uh, Kubernetes pod, uh, um, then it'll translate that to what the eBPF program needs in the kernel to do the filtering inside the kernel, uh, because you don't want to be filtering in user space because it's much more performant to be doing that inside of the kernel without the kernel switches, um, the the context switches. And so, you know, here's a kind of a diagram of, of what we have here. The EBPF program um, is, is you know, loading into the EBPF maps. Uh, Inspector Gadget then is talking to all of the services that the Kubernetes service, the container managers and runtimes, and I say others here because we're looking to add, we have actually an issue in a, in a, um, um, a POC right now for systemd units. Uh, so if you want to, you know, if you're basically using systemd, and um, we're interested in, other, um, in adding other uh, um, targets for enrichment, and so uh, what we want to do is basically populate um, the information that's coming out of these BPF programs uh, with all the information that's relevant for your system. And so we have a demo of that. Right. So what I'm going to do here is to run one of the gadgets uh, this time in Kubernetes and show you what is the information that it provides. So if we try to act so this is how it provides information about the different DNS requests and replies that are going on on the cluster. So when we're trying to access a service that is running on the cluster, we can see that on the left, we provide information about what is the Kubernetes pod where that request is coming from. And also for the destination and source endpoints, we don't only provide the IP address, but we also enrich that information we that data with information about the pod or the, or the service where that request is going or coming from. So this is useful for people when you are debugging something, you don't want to do this IP to container, to pod, or to service machine manually. Inspector Gadget is doing that automatically for you. Okay. Oh, let me go back. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so one of the most exciting things we've added recently is user space processing. And so <clears throat> what we mean by this is that, you know, all, 
like we said, uh, the data that comes out of the, the BPF program is kind of raw, and you might want to add additional data, or it might not be in a format that is, is how, um, <coughs> So one thing we should add, uh, BPF has certain limitations on what you can do inside the kernel for safety reasons, or things that are just kind of complex to do, even if you possibly could do it. Uh, and we'll give an example of that um, in just a second. Um, but we wanted a way to basically allow people to, when, when information comes out of the BPF programs, uh, to do something with that data that they might that we might not imagine ourselves, right? And so we wanted a general purpose way for people to do user space processing. And so we decided to turn to WASM for this uh, because it you know it basically provides good sandboxing for us and it provides uh, you know support for multiple languages. So we have a demo today doing it in Go, but we also have uh, you know some um, uh, programs written in Rust that do the same thing. Um, and so. Yeah, it was, it's kind of a perfect uh, match for, for what we're looking to do. Um, and, you know, and one, one thing we're looking to do with this in the future is to add some, um, you know, some um, language neutral APIs uh, for common things that you might want to do. Uh, you know, we have an example, for example, today for formatting some DNS stuff, uh, which is hard to do inside the kernel, uh, but very easy to do in user space. And so, you know, basically adding a library for that kind of stuff would be uh, very nice. And so we have a, did I? Yeah, so basically the way this looks is, you know, similarly, the BPF program puts it into a BPM map, we pull it out, and then we just send it to the WASM module, and it sends DS output out. So very easy to understand, I would say. Uh, so we have a demo for that. Yeah, so one of the cases is the DNS name of a request that's encoded in a variable uh, len approach, so that's very difficult to handle in a BPF. So in that case, we do the processing of that data using uh, was on in user space. So this is the program that is doing that. I'm not going into the details, but this is the program that takes the information that is coming from eBPF and produces a human readable version of that. And yeah, in this case, for just demo purposes, I'm going also to provide some additional uh, logic there, like masking one of the uh, domains. Okay, it should be here. So let me run this. So yeah, the, the gadget is running. If I try to access, actually, it should be one. If I try to access, for instance, this food.com, we can see that the name of the DNS is not provided. But if I try to access something different like Google, we can see that the name of the URL or the domain is present there. Okay, thank you. We only have like three minutes left, so. Um, yeah, one of, one of the goals is not only to be able to use it as an interactive tool, but be able to build on it. And you have kind of several options to do this. You know, you can use the, the IG binary uh, directly and just parse the JSON output. <coughs> or you can, you know, start IG as a daemon and then talk to it, uh, you know, um, using either, or sorry, it should be gadget CTL and connect using gRPC, or, um, connect using gRPC, because we have an API for that. Um, but you can also, interestingly, import the Go library into a Go program. And so we have users, for example, the CubeScape project from Armo. Um, they're actually going to be presenting, I think, tomorrow. Uh, they use Inspector Gadget in this way. And so they previously used Falco um, to do this. And Inspector Gadget, um, uh, they, they switched to Inspector Gadget because it was a little more flexible for them. Um, but we actually, interestingly, for this, <laughs> and using this Go library package, we were able to actually um, add um, kind of inspector gadget support to Falco because Falco only really responds to uh, syscalls. And so we wanted, with inspector gadget, we can actually add uh, different kind of things that you can attach to to basically be a source for Falco. Um, so yeah, it's, but we try to make it very flexible. So if there's a, a use case you have that's not covered, you know, please tell us and we'll work with it. Um, so coming plans, I just want to show the slide because we don't have much time. Um, you know, uh, we're adding scriptability. So there's a project called BPF Trace. We already actually have that implemented, but we don't have enrichment for that because that's actually turns out to be a lot of work, but we want to do that work because we find that very interesting to make it very scriptable. So you don't even have to have a BPF program, you just script it. Um, we want to bundle gadgets, so you have basically a defined set of gadgets that you can deploy and um, yeah, um, for your use case. Uh, we won't add more security mechanisms. For example, only load from this specified repo, only load signed um, uh, gadgets. Uh, we have one minute. Uh, 
uh, and uh, but or don't load any gadgets at all because uh, I've defined that all when I started the program. Um, so we want to add that um, to make it very flexible. Um, clustering has a concept outside of Kubernetes, so you might have multiple um, uh, nodes, and you want to act like that's all of one uh, thing, and we can aggregate that. Runtime configuration, so you actually um, can just provide a file similar to like Docker Compose, where you can run uh, multiple gadgets at the same time using certain parameters, and you basically do run and then provide the configuration file and it takes care of it instead of doing that individually. Uh, and always proper documentation, which we're working on continuously. Um, so we actually don't have this demo uh, time for that. Um, so we're gonna end with that. Uh, but I do want to mention we have a project booth at KubeCon. At the, this is our first time we are, actually I didn't mention that, we are a CNCF sandbox project since the beginning of the year. And so we're taking advantage of that by having a project booth, so please come to talk to us. Uh, and Mauricio has a talk at 5.25 on Tuesday collecting low-level metrics with BPF. Uh, so thank you, and we have time for questions. Thank you. Hey, um, how do you see, have you thought about how this inspector gadget kind of ecosystem would complement if you're heavily invested in Cilium and cluster mesh and the kind of BPF based ecosystem there, how these might work together or complement each other? Well, I mean, Cilium uses BPF uh, to do a lot of this stuff. What they, what they do, they actually mutate the system because they're saying, okay, this package goes here and stuff like that. Uh, we focus on things that don't mutate the system, so we're like more observability uh, where we just you know, collect data. Uh, so that's a, a key difference. Uh, but for example, uh, you know, we're talking with some folks from the, um, uh, what's the other service mesh? Uh, Istio, <laughs> the Istio folks, for example, to use Inspector Gadget to gather insights similar to what actually Cilium can provide uh, using this. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's a bit bit different, right? We're we're collecting data. We don't want to actually mutate the system, uh, and whereas Cilium, it also collects a lot of data, but it also actually is is directing the traffic and and you know, yeah. Uh, you you kind of half answered my question already answering his, but I was going to ask, have you talked to the Istio people about using this to debug and expose things about their sidecarless mode that uses eBPF? Uh, well, I mean, we, we think it could very well be a, a good match. <laughs> yeah. Any, any specifics you can share? Uh, no, because I've been on vacation for the last three weeks and I've forgotten <laughs> and I have to catch up on those conversations. <laughs> that, that, that sounds like an excuse to me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Chris and Mauricio, for this good talk. And uh, yeah, we will. Uh